Project X came out in 1987. This movie has nothing to do with a high school house party. If that's what you came here for, you can go away. Project X is about a top secret military experiment testing the effects of nuclear weapons on chimpanzees. So yeah, it's very different. And don't let the little smiles on the cover fool you. This movie happens to be one of the scariest movies that I have ever seen. And not just because I watched it when I was a kid. By the time I watched this, I was already familiar with plenty of horror movies. We're talking Halloween, Friday the 13th, Hellraiser. We'll tear your soul apart. But nothing could have prepared me for just how chilling and disturbing this movie is. No joke, some of these scenes have been burned into my brain forever. And thanks to this movie, I now have a terrifying fear of chimpanzees. These images haunt me to this day, and I'm honestly nervous about making this video. If you thought the opening to 28 Days Later had some scary chimps, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, after watching Project X, I can't even watch Dunstan Checks In without having flashbacks. Project X follows Virgil, a chimpanzee who was taken from the wild as a baby and sold to a university to be studied. He gets taught sign language by a researcher named Terry, who's played fantastically by Helen Hunt. No, no, it's not playtime either, it's work time. She comes across very calm and compassionate, so it's no wonder why Virgil takes a liking to her right away. After working with Virgil for a few years, Terry loses her funding and Virgil's taken away by some government agency. In comes Garrett, a reckless young pilot played by Matthew Broderick. And this is Broderick right after Ferris Bueller's day off. So I'm sure he surprised quite a few people back then that he could do more than comedy. So Garrett got busted for flying a plane without permission. I am relieving of your duty with the Civil Air Patrol and I am reassigning you until you can learn to obey orders. So as a punishment, he gets demoted and reassigned to look after chimpanzees in a top classified secret project. Top super duper maxi extreme ultra secret. And this is where the movie already starts to get to me. This facility is so creepy and unsettling. There's just something about seeing these poor chimps caged up in such sterile, cold environments that it just never sits well with me. So Garrett goes about his work looking after the chimps. He feeds them. He cleans their cages. But his main duty is to teach the chimps how to fly using these simulations, kind of like an arcade. Well, one of the chimps turns out to be Virgil. After realizing Virgil knows how to use sign language, Garrett also learns sign language to communicate. Open the fingers and circle the hand in front of the face from right to left. Beautiful. The two of them form a strong bond, and even though his co-workers warn him not to get too emotionally involved with the animals, Garrett takes it upon himself to name each of the chimps, and he gets to know all of their personalities. One of them used to be a circus chimp, and he's addicted to cigarettes. Another one is a goofball who blows raspberries at people. And because of Garrett's strong connection with these animals, he becomes an effective handler, and the chimps he cares for usually outperform the others. Because of this, Garrett gets a promotion. Jimmy, you've earned yourself a promotion. I want you to take over for Airman Watts as graduate program trainer. Now up to this point, you might say to yourself, this is kind of a bittersweet story. A baby chimp is taken from the wild, which is sad, but he meets Terry, a caring scientist who teaches him sign language. He's taken away again, which is sad, but this time he meets a very rough around the edges guy and helps him settle down. But then the plot just sucker punches you in the face. After his promotion, Garrett is given clearance to take the chimps to their final test where he learns the truth about the project. The goal is to find out if a military pilot could survive long enough after a nuclear attack to be able to fly far enough to retaliate by dropping a nuke of our own. But in order to do that, the chimps are set up in a flight simulator, just like normal, only this time they're alone in a large room and exposed to huge amounts of radiation and left to fly for as long as they can before they die. I know, it's heavy. But as if that idea wasn't enough, we get the visuals. This scene, right here, haunts me to this day. Mm -hmm. 
Once Garrett learns the purpose of these experiments, he wants out. He plans to just leave, but when he finds out that the next chimp to be executed is going to be Virgil, he has other plans. He calls up Terry, Virgil's original trainer, and tells her what's going on. The two of them break into the facility to get Virgil, but when they show up, they find out that the rest of the chimps have already escaped, and they're not happy. I mean, just in case you haven't seen enough to give you nightmares. This movie hits you so hard with these types of images. It's no wonder I got nightmares when I was a kid. Terry and Garrett break the chimps out of the facility and, wouldn't you know it, they hijack a plane. It's such a silly ending for a heavy movie, but I figure after watching what we've been through, we could use something to lighten up the mood. This movie has stuck with me over the years, as I'm sure it's stuck with many people. I mean, it's a story about cruel and deadly experiments done on helpless animals. You don't need much more than that for it to stick with you. But just in case you do, even the fact that they used real animals as actors is upsetting. These animals aren't actors. They're meant to be in the wild. And how ironic is it that a movie disparaging the unethical treatment of animals would be using animals that have themselves been taken from the wild, probably in a similar way to Virgil. The true reason this movie has stuck with me over the years is so much more than what I've just talked about. The visuals. We get these looks. I wasn't prepared for this as a kid, and I don't think I'm prepared for it now. No matter how many movies out there show you a creepy man in a mask staring into the camera, nothing comes close to this. Now, with all of that said, and all the nightmares I probably just gave you, watch this movie. It really is a touching story that examines something very serious in a thoughtful and compassionate way. Even though the other handlers that seem complicit with the project struggle because they know it's morally wrong. And when Garrett finally speaks up, the others follow his lead because they know he's right. And not every shot is terrifying. Thanks for watching everyone, my name's Kenny. Now before you go, click on that head right about here to subscribe. And until next time, let's not just watch movies, let's talk about them too.